Hey folks, it's Chad here at Airstream in Greensboro, and this is the full walk around video of the all new 2024 Atlas. Now, if you're looking for the short video that also has Laura in it and her impression of the inside, just click above one of whichever side that's going to be on. Now, let's start with the full walk around of the 2024 Atlas. This one's going to have the E1 package on it. And yes, we'll start on the inside because that's where everybody wants to go first. Now coming in, we do have the awning. I'm gonna put that away since we're going inside. And there's an easy way to do that right here. You can just click that button there. That's for auto levels, we'll talk about that later. And then the awning will start pulling itself in. Now the steps as we go in, I wanna mention Something that makes the Atlas unique, and one of the questions I get is, why is the price tag for the Atlas, the Airstream Atlas, so high? And a big part of that is the way they build it. So for instance, you've got a flat floor that comes all the way out to the sidewall. A lot of your other manufacturers, that, that's gonna be a, a B plus. That's what this would be considered is a class B plus. The step well is gonna go into the camper. You're, it's not gonna be flat here. This is actually gonna be one of the steps for the coach. With Airstream, they install this kind of fancy step here that folds into uh, the side of the coach. But what it's giving you is this nice flat floor all the way on the inside. And I'll show you why that's important here in a second. Now, just to demonstrate this step here, close the door so the step can go away. You can see it folds into itself. This is the kind of stuff that you would see on a class A diesel pusher. Um, now, one thing I do want to point out is how that step does integrate into the side of the coach. So it almost disappears once you close the door and put it away. It's just a really cool look. Um, now we'll go through all of the outside compartments in the second half of this video. The first half, we're going to walk inside and take a look at the inside. The beep is to tell you hey, the step is coming out and it's going to hit you if you're standing in the way. Now, there is a step hold button here. What that will do is when you're camping, it'll let the step stay out. You see the step in there? So the step will stay out when you shut the door. So you can open the door, you can shut it, doesn't matter. It's going to stay out. But when you're you know, storing it, you'll want to turn that off so the step goes away. Now, coming inside... So this coach has the E1 package, come on in. Uh, so we can go around there so we can see um, this side of the coach. So it has the E1 package. Now there's a few things that make the E1 package unique. The biggest thing is gonna be the power system that's on this. So the Atlas is gonna have the Volta 12,000 watt battery system. So this coach does not have a diesel generator on it. That'll be the standards kind of setup. Now, one of the things about Atlas that's unique now for 2024, there's really no options outside of whether or not you get E1 or not. Now, if you get E1, you're gonna have the Volta power system. That's what this monitor is showing you. The one below it is gonna show you the Timberline diesel fired hot water heater and furnace. And then we do still have the Firefly system right there. That lets you control a lot of things in the coach from this touch panel, uh, but not everything because one, the battery system is going to be controlled by the Volta. Now we have the AC on because it's cold outside, but warm inside. And the AC is currently running off of battery, which is just incredible. Uh, Airstream says that they estimate the AC can run off of the battery system at fully charged for eight to 10 hours. So you have eight to 10 hours to be able to run the battery. Now let me talk a little bit about the Volta system. I have some papers around here. No, not there. Where did I put them? Did I put them in here? Okay, here we go. I'm going to take this jacket off because it's, now it's warm. So with the Volt, with the E1 package, and the reason they call it the E1 package and not the Volta system, because the Volta system isn't unique to Airstream. Uh, a lot of manufacturers use the Volta system. But what Airstream also does is change some things like the heating system. So it's got the Timberline. So there's no propane on this coach at all. You're going to have the diesel-fired heater for heat and for the water heater. You're also going to get the induction cooktop. That's part of the E1 package. Now, it is one burner, and I have seen people kind of give um, Airstream uh, negative feedback on this. But I think with a 
Atlas Touring Coach. The idea is that this is it is a touring coach. You know, it's a Class B plus touring coach, and you're not necessarily going to be cooking full meals in here. Um, you're going to heat things up, maybe make coffee on that. You do have a convection microwave here that is part of the the well. This will be a standard thing, but you do get it on the E1 package. And because you have the 3000 watt inverter, this will run off of that inverter as well. Now, what's cool about the E1, or the Volta system tied into the Firefly system, it will automatically shed things to allow you to be able to kind of seamlessly use the coach. So for instance, if the AC is running and you want to run the microwave, it will um, turn the compressor and the AC off to allow you to run the microwave. Once the microwave is done and it's turned off, It'll give it a few seconds and then it will, it will kick the compressor back on. Same thing if you want to run this 1100 watt uh, true induction cooktop. You're not going to be able to run that per se with the compressor running at full blast. That'd be too much power for the 30, the 3000 watt inverter. Now, as far as what you get on the E1 package, so I've mentioned the induction cooktop, the Timberline system, the 12,000 watt Volta system, which is going to have uh, the 12,000 watt battery in it, but then also a 3,000 watt inverter. Now, a few other things that Airstream is doing, I got these papers just so I don't mess up the numbers because it's a lot of numbers. Um, 3,200 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now, the other big thing is you get two 30 amp DC to DC charge controllers. Now, what that is and why it's important it, from the engine coming back, you're going to have a second 51 volt, uh, 6,900 watt alternate alternator. Now that needs to come in to something to control charging that large battery pack. So what those two DC to DC charge controllers are doing, is they're pulling that all of that energy from that second alternator. They're converting it to whatever it needs to be to fit the battery's needs to charge the battery. So what's cool about this coach is while you're going down the road, the engine is charging the batteries as you're driving down the road and uh, should charge them pretty quick. And then the other thing you're going to have is the Victron 100 by 20 solar charge controller. Now this has standard 300 watts of solar for the coach and then 100 watts for the chassis battery. So you're always getting a tr trickle charge to the tra chassis battery. So let's start on that side and we're going to kind of do a full walkthrough. I haven't even mentioned one of the coolest things that you're going to get now on the Atlas. So as I mentioned, for the most part now with the Atlas, you're pretty much standard everything except for the E1 package, which I think is huge. That means your auto level is now standard. Your Starlink is standard. Like there's so much stuff to talk about on this coach. So you have the high performance Starlink system here uh, with the huge satellite on top. That's standard now for Atlas. I'm assuming you probably have to pay you know, your monthly subscription. So when you come into the coach first, you're going to have your battery disconnect for the voltage system right there. And that, that will disconnect that battery and connect it when you turn it on and off. You're going to have a little bit of storage right here, just on the inside of the door. And then, of course, we have the control systems for the Volta and the Timberline. And then this is a slide button which you also can run the slide in and out through the Firefly system. Then we got Firefly right beside that. Now the Firefly system is gonna let you do a few things. So this is your home screen here. You can see your tank levels here. You can turn your tank heaters on, turn the water pump on. Um, you can auto do auto fill, which is a cool feature that they have on the freshwater tank side. When you're plugged in, you can click that on and it will auto fill that tank for you. Uh, you can turn all your lights on and off. You can also click into a cinema mode Cinema mode will dim lights and do a few other things. You can run your awning in and out here as well as lift the TV here. So if we click cinema mode, you'll notice the blinds go down. The TV st starts to pop up automatically because you've got the pop-up TV. Yep. And then all the lights above us dimmed, which is kind of a cool feature if you just want to watch TV at night and just quickly get into that mode. You don't have to click a bunch of things. You can just click cinema mode and all of this will happen for you automatically. So we're gonna get the lights back on. So we have lights. Then we can put the TV away by clicking that down and that TV will go away on its own. That's a 40 inch TV there with a JBL soundbar above. So you should have great sound. 
And then we can also set our temperature here for the AC system. And then now you can go in and control all of your lights. Remember, there's a light master. And then you also have the ability to turn individual lights on and off, as well as your door handle on the outside does have a light. Now, this would generally be your generator control screen. So on the non-E1 package, this is where you're going to be able to turn the generator on and off. You'll be able to set some of your things like auto gen start, that type of stuff. Um, this is just going to kind of show you what's happening with the inverter, uh, what's being shed, if there's any power being shed, that will show you that there. That's your energy management system is what that stands for. This power source here is coming from the inverter. Now you can change that to have a different amp level. So if I click tap that, it's going to go showing 15 amps. If I tap it again, 20 amps, and tap it one more time, it'll be 26 amps. To be able to run the AC, it's got to be set to 26 amps. Otherwise, it tries to shed the AC over here and won't let it turn on. And then if you have shore power coming in, you can see what the shore power is doing. And then right there, we can see what the inverter is doing. Uh, come down one more. We're going to have our AC and heat control. You can actually just set auto if you want to. And um, it will automatically set all that stuff, turn the fan on and off. Now you see shed there. What that is telling us right now is it's not letting the compressor turn on. The fan is kicked on. And then now we've got the little snowflake. So now the AC is actually running. And then we'll go down one more. This is going to be all of our shades. We can run those up and down. Uh, and we can tilt them, open them. We also have things like your TV lift. Um, your What shade is that? Oh, that slide. <laughs> and I want that out. There we go. So we're running the slide in and out. We can run the awning in and out. And of course, we can open the skylight, which is right above us. Because this does have a huge skylight, which is going to be terrible for the camera. But we have a dark shade, night shade. And then we also have a kind of day shade, but will allow you to open it and keep the bugs out. So, of course, it's, it is your Atlas. This is top of the line, the best coach you can possibly buy for the money. So you're not going to manually put that up. You're going to click a button and put it up. Shut that back because it's way too bright. And then up here is going to be kind of your entertainment area. So we've got the pack that comes with the Atlas up here stored for now. We also have a subwoofer control there. Let me turn some light on. Subwoofer control. And then you do have some power up here as well as your HD antenna power is right there. There is some HDMI plugs here to be able to plug in various things that you might want to plug in, your DVD players, Roku TVs, Apple TVs, whatever it might be. But those do go to both your inside TV and your outside TV connection is all right there if you want to do that. Now, this is also pre-wired for Air Connect, and that would be up here as well if you wanted to add that. Now, you've got Starlink, so you don't necessarily need the air connect system because that's going to use lte and campground wi-fi you do have two speakers up here the reason these speakers exist is the dash here is going to be for the mercedes so that radio works when the engine's turned on it's not going to work when you're at the campsite plugged into shore power so they give you another radio right here it's a fusion radio uh, fm AM is the other one, and it also has Bluetooth, so you can run, you know, connect your phone to it and, can, and play music over, and that's going to play over these two speakers that are up here, the two JBLs. And then we do have some storage right there. Now, this is the Atlas Murphy bed, and what that means is we have a Murphy bed in this area here. And what I do want to point out real quick is there is another touch screen right there. In fact, there are four total of four touch screens in this coach. So you can pretty much never be too far from one of these touch screens to be able to control the whole system inside the coach. Now, this particular couch is very comfortable. Of course, it's across from uh, the TV. The, as far as dinette goes, the dinette is going to be just... Okay. Hopefully, Laura edited all of that out. So, on the table, you have two spots for dining. The first spot will be right here. 
So we need to screw this into place. Like that. And then we have a table that will sit down in here. And it actually is held in place. So the table won't come off by accident. And then the other spot It's gonna be over here. We can put another one right here in place because we have back when these were uh, manual seats, this was a lot faster. But, of course, we all want powered seats. Of course, this is where did they put? Out, oh, there it is. So this will swing around. Oh, wrong way. And... Oh, cool trick on the emergency brake. When you pull it up, of course you want to have that in place, but then you can't rotate your captain's chair here. So it will actually just push down and it's still engaged. But to undo the e-brake, the e you'll pull it up and then push the button in and lock it down now the e-brake's off. We've got, oh, we need a table. <laughs> Our other table. That's that easy. <laughs> but these, these should let you turn. They lock in. Yeah, there it goes. So you can turn these, so you can have um, you have four seats here for seating and entertaining. You've got multiple spots to be able to sit and have drinks or have food, but there's not a traditional dinette in this. This coach is just not big enough for that. So this would be your kind of setup for entertaining, watching TV, which these seats are really comfortable. So uh, I would sit there. I would sit like right here. You could see the TV. Okay, now we also have over here, we're going to have a nice little bag to hold that stuff. We've got recliners. Now, it's not the type of recliner like at home where um, the seat goes back. Now, the seat will go back, but there's one single control for that. And that's gonna be on that side. I'm gonna go to that side. So on this side, we'll have both the button to raise the legs up. And then this one, where is it? Right there. We'll actually kind of let the back lay back a little bit. So you can get you know, you can get more comfortable. But it's the bench is on one side, it's one motor so the whole bench is going to uh, rotate back at the same time but then you've got each uh, leg the uh, leg rest that you can bring up so you can get fairly comfortable in here now we also have the murphy bed here and to do the murphy bed you're going to take these arm rests off and they can kind of go wherever you want to put them and then we're going to set the couch or the couch down using that powered button there. So it's almost gonna turn the couch into a bed itself. And if you are wondering, there are seat belts here, so you can bring four, four people with you because there are four, there are four seat belts. Now Laura's gonna swing around to the other side. Now the trick to putting the bed down 
and there should be a video from Airstream just for this. But there's basically, right down here, there's a locking pin. You're not gonna be able to see it. But it's just a steel pin that goes up into a hole. And the thing about it being a steel pin is if I pull on the bed and try to unlatch that pin, it binds the pin, you can actually end up breaking the mechanism over here that undoes, that undoes, un, yeah, undoes the bed. So the trick to getting this bed out is you don't wanna pull on it at the same time as you're trying to pull the lever is it'll actually bind it up and it'll stretch the cable. So what you wanna do is to make sure that the bed is kind of in its stationary position and then pull that lever. And by doing that, it will let it freely come undone. Now you're gonna have a king size bed across, not necessarily a king size bed down to the bottom. Now, if you remember outside, I mentioned the floor here and I said that the, the benefits of that floor I'd show you in a second. And that's that at night, if you're sleeping on this side, come on. If you're on this side of the bed and you wanna get up, you can easily get up and walk around. There's plenty of room to walk through because that floor doesn't step down to go into the, the step well like most of your other manufacturers. We sell Integra Motor Coach here as well and the Quest has that setup. If you're to walk around, you've gotta be careful not to step down into that step because you'll fall. But there's plenty of room to be able to walk around and go to the bathroom at night if I wanna do that. The other thing that's important that a lot of people will ask about is step over there. Can the bed be down with the slide room in? Am I hitting that over there? Yeah. Yeah. So the slide is all the way in now and the bed is out. So you can, if you're stopping somewhere for the night and you, but you're not able to run the slide room out, you can put the bed down with the slide in and you can do it with the slide in as well. So. I can put the bed back up. It's back in its spot. Run the chair back in. And you can you can maneuver around. You can actually use the coach even the, with the slide in if you're in a situation where you're not able to put the slide out, say a Cracker Barrel parking lot, something like that. So you can do that and then we'll run the slide back out. See how long that takes. There we go, and then slides back out. And as far as putting this back into kind of your spot that you're gonna use it, we're just gonna put these back in their spots. I'll say this is a little bit on the rudimentary side, as in a very simple design, but, it, but it's effective, it works. And then we already showed you the TV a second ago. So I'll show that to you again, I'll run that up. We're also gonna have, while that's going up, a little bit of storage right here. This cable is for the Starlink. If you decide you wanna run your Starlink into your own uh, switch or modem, that's what that cable's for that comes with it. And then the next one below is actually gonna be your power box with all of your breakers and fuses for the various systems in the coach. But they do have that hide that behind a door, which is kind of nice. And then there's a little bit of a storage spot right there with power and um, USB if you need that there. And then above up here, as I mentioned, you have the Starlink system, that's gonna be right there. That's the modem for the Starlink system. That is the power for the Starlink system and it's currently on. Um, and it will probably just turn on as soon as you turn power on. But lots of good storage up here, nice and deep. There is a little bit of a lip here uh, to prevent things from coming out. This nice piece of aluminum here too. And then we do have 
lights that, sh that shoot up for, I guess, scene, scenery lights. What do you call those? Mood lights, mood lights. You probably just saw the camera do that because the world was like, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then swinging around, I'll show you the galley. So we are gonna have a nice stainless steel undermounted sink that is dampened with a residential faucet there. Now these blinds here are gonna be manual just because of where they're located. I think there's a um, code that requires those to be manual. We also have a aluminum back. I just got stuff all over that. <laughs> Sorry to the cleanup people. But aluminum backsplash there. Another touch panel. You can turn all your lights on and off here as well as turning your water pump on if you need to do that while you're you know, doing dishes, cooking, whatever it might be. We have a little bit of trash can here. Remember, every Airstream comes with a trash can. Come on. It comes out. Oh, look, you can see stuff back there. All right, and then we've got the induction cooktop. Now, if you don't get the E1 package, this is gonna be a two burner propane cooktop. Now below the sink, we've got a little sponge holder. We're gonna have a pull out drawer, full extension, and the door that opens for some more storage underneath a good like deep storage area. We'll have another pull out there with your silverware organizer. There's also an extension here. Another pull out and a third pull out. And then opposing the galley area, we're gonna have the refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator and it is gonna kick on. As soon as you give it power, this fridge will turn on. And it's actually, it's only been on for maybe an hour and it's already cooling down. And then the freezer portion of that is right there. There are travel locks right here to keep the door shut when you're traveling. And then you do have that convection microwave that's also an air fryer as well. And I'll give you a shot of what that looks like on the inside. Of course, this is gonna be an RV microwave, so it's not, it's not a huge uh, residential microwave. And then we're gonna have the pull-out pantry with drawers that are adjustable. These shelves are adjustable. And then there'll be a little bit of storage, your silverware storage, and the, the plug back there for the microwave. Now for the bathroom area, you do have a uh, pocket door. And it does lock in place. So that, that's actually locking it in place when it's all the way closed or all the way open. So the door will come until you push that down. And the same thing for when it's open. I just noticed the toilet paper holder is on that door. That's kind of funny. Uh, we do have some storage above here in the bathroom. Oh, I wish there was a shelf there. And there needs to be a catch right there. And we do have a fantastic fan above. We can turn it on and off right here. But I think you can also turn that on with the touch screen. It would be that one. Now I guess it's just a skylight. So you'd open this here. Yep. Just like the flying clouds. But it's a nice large fan. As opposed to the little, uh, we call it fart fan. And there's another fan in the kitchen. Yes. Wow, there's three, two fans total, yeah. All right, and as far as the toilet, there's, well, with the door shut, there's not a lot of room. But if the door's open, there's plenty of room. It's a little, little narrow in the shoulders. You know, if you have wide shoulders, you know, this, those of us who have to struggle with life and our wide shoulders. Now, one of the big upgrades for 2024 is a 4500 chassis. Now, I haven't talked about that yet. I'm going to talk more about it when we're outside. But the... Uh, improvement. There's a lot of things that are coming from the 4500 chassis. Originally, they were producing this on the 3500 because Mercedes didn't produce a bigger chassis. Now they are. So the 4500, believe it or not, finally gives you the ability to have a porcelain toilet because the 3500, the porcelain toilet was too heavy. Yes, I said that. Too heavy. 
But now, because we have the bigger chassis, and we've got a porcelain toilet, we also have over 1,900 pounds of cargo capacity, even with the porcelain toilet, believe it or not. Um, now, we'll see the shower. Of course, as you can see, the shower does have lighting. There's also this really cool teak wood accent here. And, um, nice oh, storage. Yeah, there's some storage there. That storage that doesn't have anything to stop. So you have to remove that every, before you leave. Really nice Kohler uh, faucet there. And as far as the shower, it's a corner shower, but there's plenty, I mean, there's plenty of room in here. This, this shower, I mean, like in the airstream world, this is huge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and for other things it's, it's not going to be not going to be large now it does have a uh, travel lock here that you can use to lock the doors shut when you're traveling which i do recommend and then i do like how you kind of can open and present yourself <laughs> um i'll put the travel lock on and just locks in place like that and you can actually take this off completely when you're traveling if you don't want to have it or when you're parked store this somewhere or let it hang out on one side and then you've just got your two there. But when you're traveling, definitely have this locked in place. Otherwise, these things are gonna sling open. But really nice shower uh, for the Atlas and it's very tall too. Um, you can see, hopefully you can see my head when I was in there. There is AC in here and there's also a furnace back here too, which is right down there. So you have both heating and air into the bathroom. We're gonna have the mirror there. Hey, there's Laura. And the medicine cabinet behind, which is actually really nice with the different levels, like storage areas. And I like the, the little bars to keep everything in. And then the bottom one stays open. We've got another undermounted stainless steel sink with accordion countertop there. Power. That is going to be a sensor for the HVAC system. And then we've got another touch panel in here again to be able to turn on water pump, lights, whatever you might want to turn on while you're in here. One thing that would be cool, I don't know if they could do this, but but to customize each of these home screens for each area. So like this one be more focused on the galley area, and then this one be more focused on the bathroom area, but in current, like the way it's currently set up, it's the same control each at each spot. But it's crazy that you have four touch screens in this tiny coach because walking into there would be too far or walking over to that one would be too far, the one beside the, the, the couch, or standing up and, <laughs> and touching that one. It just cracks me up that, that's, that there's this many, there's this many uh, touch panels. Now we have a storage area here. This is just gonna be storage. It does have adjustable shelves, but no, no bar to hang anything. That is a cedar lined closet, as you can see there. The underneath this area here is actually gonna be some of your components with the Volta system is gonna be down in there and that's why you don't have access to that. And then back here, I'll grab the camera. We're gonna have another closet and this will also have adjustable shelves, but then it has a hanging bar. If you wanna convert this to be your hanging closet, then you also have you know, a storage closet there. Now in this area here, we're gonna have sheets because the uh, Atlas does come with sheets for the bed. It's also going to come with towels, believe it or not, which is just awesome. I think they used to be branded, but I don't think they are anymore. It's like just a Dometic towel. <laughs> that cracks me up. Dometic makes towels. And then this will be the remainder of your goodie box. There's a whole lot of different things in here as far as like first aid kits, um, testing things, power cable. All that stuff is in that box there. It's kind of the Airstream goodie box. There's also a larger box that we've got outside currently that has your quilt in it. And then there are some decorative pillows right there that comes with the Atlas. And then we have two pull-out drawers, full extension drawers right there. So plenty of storage areas. Also love to point out these massively over-engineered over hinges that they put on this closet door, not two, but three. And that's just Airstream, I think, showing off, but that's the quality that you're gonna see. Solid wood everywhere, it doesn't matter where you're looking, what you're touching, it's gonna be solid, light Italian plywood, the door, even just this, this is just a cover to hide the mechanism for the door, but that's solid wood as well. Um, 
There's lights in there too. There we go. Yeah, I missed anything. Under missed bathroom. under bath. And storage underneath. What's in here? Uh, it looks like it's something for winterization, but that's cool. Oh, it tells you what it is. Okay. La lavy cabinet. Oh, this is just what the door is. That's funny. But that's cool. Easy access to that. That's probably something to do with winterization, like a low point drain or something like that. And, um, yep, more storage there. And a little light there. That does have a um, sensor on it, so it will go off when it's dark. I think we'll come on when it senses motion. I think it's a motion sensor. Now underneath this area here is gonna be the inverter. And so far, the whole time we've been in this coach, there's been a fan running and we can hear it. So that's just something to know, at least with the E1 package, there is a fan in there. It's probably pulling air around, at least pulling it. Yeah, I can feel the air pulling into this. So it's probably pulling air in and maybe out down here. But I can definitely hear a fan in there. I don't think it's a refrigerator. It could be. Um, but definitely hearing a fan. I see. I think that's everything in here, right? Mm -hmm. I stood in the shower, sat on the toilet. <laughs> you, you showed him the USB on the couch. And then up, up above here, because it's... So the Atlas is going to be... A, a, a B plus is what we call it. The reason we call it B plus is there's not a bed hanging out over the cab. So your cab over bed is generally what class C is referring to. Some people also say class C is referring to cutaway chassis, which is what this is. Generally in the industry, we're gonna consider this to be a B plus because it's on a Mercedes chassis. It's not gonna be longer than 24 foot because that's the limit that, that uh, Mercedes gives them for manufacturing. And there's not a cab over bed even though it is a cutaway chassis. But since it's a cutaway chassis, uh, Airstream is manufacturing this box that we're in, and that means they're able to manufacture in the ducted AC system, the quiet stream system. So we're gonna have ducted AC, the inlet is also ducted. What that's gonna mean for you on this coach versus say the Touring Coach, the 24 GT or 24 GL, or any other system that just has the whole AC unit kind of hanging out down here, this is gonna run right around 20% quieter versus those other style systems because it is a true inducted system. There is a, a very small little filter in there. You can take these screws out and then replace that filter or clean that filter depending on what you wanna do there. And then you're also gonna have, because it's the Airstream, this really nice aluminum. It's the Alcoa aluminum, the same type of aluminum they use for the traditional Airstream travel trailer. And to give you a little bit of the true Airstream feel, they add this in on the on your ceiling, uh, both in the Atlas and all the touring coaches. And I also like that they put it here now too. And that does have a clear coat, so it is protected, uh, even though it's inside, so it's not, it's not really gonna have a whole lot of issues. So what we're gonna do now is we will kind of get things straightened up in here. We're gonna go to the outside and do a walk of the outside. We've gotta show you the roof as well. And then we'll do the test drive too. Did you know we're doing a test drive? I did not. All right, we're doing a test drive today. All right, let's move outside. Okay, folks, we're outside now on the 2024 Atlas. So the, the biggest change for 2024 is the new chassis. Now, something I haven't said yet, and I probably should have said it early on, but with the new change to the 4500 chassis, uh, with auto level being standard, with Starlink being standard, the biggest thing is there wasn't a price increase. So even though the price point for Atlas is pretty high, for this 2024 model year, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to the 2024 Atlas. Uh, now starting in the front, you're gonna have some ground effects that Airstream does add themselves. They also add the really cool Airstream logo right there. Next thing you go all the way around and you'll see those ground effects really go around all the way around to the outside. Now we also have a integrated step into the bumper to let you be able to get up and clean off the windshield, adjust wipers, whatever it is that you might want to do. And of course you're going to have the gorgeous Mercedes emblem on the front and grill. Now you'll also see, uh, should be some well integrated sensors. I don't see them on here. I don't see any sensors on here. I know there are some on the back. Now this will have your all of your driver assistance things like collision avoidance, lane keep, all of that type of stuff is gonna be on the Atlas standard. Now generally speaking with Airstream and with Atlas, 
if it's an option that you can get from Mercedes, they're gonna give you that option. You'll get the option. Now, we also have the power plant up here. I'm gonna open the hood here so we can look at it because for 2024 on the Atlas, we are sitting on the 2023 chassis. Now, Laura might know this, but I bet you guys watching know that a lot of times with your motorhome manufacturers, they buy the chassis in bulk. Generally speaking, the model year motorhome you're buying is not gonna be the same uh, motor, like motorhome part, chassis part. That's usually gonna be a year behind. So this is a 2024, we're generally gonna see it built on a 23 chassis. Now with Airstream, you may even see it be uh, two years behind where you may have a 2024, but built on a 22 chassis. The reason that is, is Airstream is gonna give you a finishing model year. That's the Airstream model year. But Mercedes also has to give you a year for when they built it. So their VIN is gonna be whatever year they built it. This is a 23 chassis, so it's gonna be a 23 VIN. Airstream built it or finished it in 24, so it's gonna be an Airstream model year 24 serial number or VIN number. I know that's a lot, but the point is, this is a 2023, which means it has the new four cylinder twin turbo charged Mercedes diesel engine in it. Gone is the V6 uh, three liter engine that we're used to and we've had for as long as I can remember. We now have a two liter twin turbocharged four cylinder engine, which I'm assuming since it's a four cylinder, it has to be an inline four cylinder, but it doesn't specify that. You actually see the two uh, twin uh, the two turbochargers right here, which is kind of cool that you can see that technology there right on top. Now, the reason for the two turbocharged turbochargers, one turbocharge is going to be on the lower end of the RPMs, where the other one, the second one, is going to be the higher end of the RPM. So that way you've got good low end torque and good high end torque when you're using this coach and driving around. We should see a more responsive coach out of this engine. It's also gonna be a little bit more fuel efficient. They're also getting a little bit more horsepower and a little bit more torque. You're going to a 211 horsepower engine and uh, 332 foot pounds of torque. Now the truth is this thing, the six cylinder had plenty of power, in my opinion, for driving this coach through the mountains, uh, driving it you know, through the city, through you know, on highway, like it had plenty of power. So to get a little bit more and to have a little bit more fuel efficiency just makes it all that much better. Um, it's also a nine gear transmission on the 2023 chassis. So the 2024 Atlas is only being built on the 23 chassis, which means you're getting this four cylinder power plant, which I think is really cool. Then over here to the right, we're actually gonna see some of the hoses and power uh, stuff for the hydraulic leveling system is right here. Now this also is gonna have, and they started this a while ago, but it's gonna have um, standard air ride in the back. And if you ever have an issue with that where it won't pump itself up, you can manually pump and inflate uh, those bags right here, which basically means you can always travel. You are always get to where you need to go, even if the system's not working. There's a manual fill valve right there for the airbags on the back. And we'll try to show you that underneath um, in the back once we get back there. Easy spot to fill your uh, windshield washer fluid right there. The engine oil right there. And then, of course, the battery is going to be under um, the chassis battery is like under the footwell of the um, driver's side. And so there's a remote connection here to be able to jump this off in the event that you run the battery dead. But that's gonna be less likely because you do have that 100 watts of solar on board just to charge the chassis battery. And then you've got your DEF, because yes, this does have that. That fill is right there. Easy to get to when you need to fill that up. I don't really see anything else. Is there like an engine oil dipstick? I bet with it being a Mercedes, it does it with a computer. I don't see anything, but the computer is right there. That's cool. I mean, the engine seems to be super easy to get to and extremely accessible. Even the belt, you can see all your belts and everything right there. I mean, it is a four cylinder, so it's probably slightly smaller than the outgoing V6. But again, two liter, four cylinder. Um, we're gonna do a test drive today, so I'll tell you what it feels like once we get out on the road. Laura's gonna tell you what it rides like. And then 
one thing I did, one thing I will, I will point out for it to be a Mercedes, there should be some shock assistant things on here to help raise this extremely heavy hood. Like this thing is a good 50 pounds. It feels like you're just showing off. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have the led headlights here in the front for Mercedes Benz. Those are Mercedes headlights. And then we've got the chromed out rims, super nice. And then you're gonna see again, some ground effects that Airstream adds. That's this step going into the, the fiberglass molded step. That's all Airstream. All of this molding here is gonna be Airstream. And another thing that I really like to point out. So Airstream puts somewhere around 300 hours just in body and paint work to make the Atlas look the way that it looks. That's part of the price tag because you're getting the Corvette of RVs. And if you look here, you've got the Mercedes metal right there and it's molded in to continue into the actual coach part of the coach. So there's no seams here, there's no seam there, there's no seams up in the front cap either because that's all fiberglass molded. 300 hours of body work that they do on the Atlas and that's, that's part of what you're gonna see there. And then again, I like the integrated skirt that comes across and that hides the step and the step is put away. So turn this step, hold off, and that's gonna go away. You got a really nice integrated step there. And I just think that looks so cool. And then we'll have one of our first outside store compartments right here, there's a little bit of storage there. Now you're gonna have a light, but you're also gonna have some USB charging. You have an HDMI uh, connection there that goes up into the front, of the front part of the coach I showed you. And there is a 110 power behind that gray door right there. So you have all that access there. If you wanna have a TV on the outside, you can do that. You also have a really cool um, chrome, shiny chrome extension this one does need to be clean but that's a shiny chrome, chrome extension for the exhaust instead of just the straight steel pipe that you're generally going to see and then now this 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 is where the magic happens so that is your 12,000 watt battery pack from volta and if you don't do the e1 package that is where your generator will be, and it's a, gen a diesel generator. But with this being the Volta package, it is the Volta system. And of course, they do have a nice sticker on there to make sure nobody's opening that up and looking in there and messing anything up. You can see some of the power connections on that front side of it. Um, but that is the Volta 12,000 watt battery pack, which is a nice, easy area to get. If you do the, the E1 on the interstate, it's like underneath. It's a little bit harder to see and work on. Then we'll have another storage compartment here. Oh, well, we can see where the vent is coming out for the, the remember the fan that we heard? That's where it's blowing to. And of course there is a light in there and this light does have the uh, sensor in there. So you can have that just on all the time. And then once it detects motion, it'll click on itself. So a little bit of storage here. The biggest thing I would like to see different here, this needs to be tall enough. What do you what do you think I'm thinking, Laura? Golf clubs are for two nice. sets of golf clubs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. But that is, I mean, it's great storage. It just needs to be tall enough for two sets of golf clubs. Bikes can go in the back. And then we'll have coming to the back, the huge kind of just gorgeous, you know, seamless um, rear cap for the Airstream Atlas with the huge Airstream emblem going across the Mercedes emblem there. Um, it does have the integrated backup camera right there. And you're also gonna have all your LED markers. There is a, a two inch receiver here that can tow 4,000 pounds. There's your uh, well integrated parking sensors. And of course we do have a spot for your license plate to go. Look at the heat. So we're talking about the seamless and the body work. So this, this is one wall, that's another wall. They body work that together all by hand. There's actually another company that does that for Airstream offsite. They drive this about 30 miles uh, to have it, or I guess they tow it, drive it, I'm not sure what they do. But then there's a whole company that does all that body work. But just look at the, the line here, how sharp that, that corner is. That's all body work done with Airstream for the Atlas. So. 
that is part of the price tag. That is what you're paying for is that Corvette style bodywork that you see there. I like the other Airstream emblem. The only thing I don't like, you know, I guess maybe I don't like it or I do like it. I'm not sure, I'll have to think about it. But it doesn't say like Atlas here. I almost would like it to say Atlas here instead of Airstream or have like Atlas below it. But that would be probably too much stuff on it. I do like that it says Airstream. Maybe it should say Atlas there and the Airstream on the back. Now this is gonna be what we call the wet bay. So this is a macerator pump system. So there's not a traditional block tank in the sense that you're just pulling a block valve and everything's gonna go out. What you have here is a macerator pump. It's gonna macerate everything. So think of a garbage disposal. It's gonna chop it all up and then pump it out of that really small hose. And if Laura will let me get in there, I'll pull that out. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Pull that out. So this is this is your stinky hose. So with this system here, you'll turn the macerator on. You'll turn open your valves. It's just like you know, normal. You open your black valve first. First, there is an off uh, valve here, so you can turn this system off. It's currently winterized, so you'll see some winterization fluid in there. And then once you hit that pump right there, the waste pump there, you can flip that on, and it just pumps all of that out for you. And then this is on a powered reel, so we can hit that button there, and it will pull itself back in. Just like that. And then that's your black tank flush right there. You've got your city fill here, and also an outside shower that you can connect to, and hot and cold water. Of course, we have that light out here as well. There is a solar connection right there if you want to add some more solar. And there's pass-throughs for both this one and that one there to get your water hoses in if you need to do that. And then this front compartment here, or forward compartment, you're going to have your shore power, which is the 30 amp um, smart plug. And then you also have cable somewhere in here, right? Yeah, below is my plug. Okay, yeah, right there. And this is for the city valve auto fuel function that this has built into it. Now that exhaust pipe there, that is part of the Timberline system. Remember, this is a diesel fired heater and hot water heater. So furnace and hot water heater. And that's the exhaust for that. And that system is going to be stored kind of under, part of it underneath and part of it above. And of course we have oh something that I really like on your wheels here you've got a valve there for your outside tire but you also have a valve for the inside tire because these are dualies and a lot of times a lot of manufacturers don't give you that extension for the inside tire to be able to check the pressure and add air to that inside tire and then we have yes an airstream with a slide room it's, it feels like that word airstream and this shouldn't be together because they don't make slide rooms anymore. But we have the slide room. It does. They do use a swim tech. It is a fairly light slide room. So it's okay to use swim tech slide mechanisms on a lighter slide. We're also going to have storage that runs with the slide. So this one will open. And this one. So that is all your outside storage there. Now the benefit to that being on the slide is when the slide room is out. You don't have to crawl under the slide to get to the slide room. And then the other nice thing is, again, the body lines all match. So when it's all in, it's just going to look nice and seamless. And then we do have a standard slide topper. This is really nice to have. You got the frameless windows as well. And then talked about the backup camera. We also have standard turn signal cameras. So for each side. And then of course it is a Mercedes, so you're gonna have the little integrated door for filling up the diesel. So you can open that, close the door, fill your diesel up when you're finished. You open the door back up, shut that. And then when you lock the door, your fuel cap or compartment is locked behind that as well. So we need to get a ladder and there, hey, look, there's another sell the lines on that so that is a basically another class b plus it's a winnebago looks a whole lot different it's amazing to see that beside this 
So that's the outside of the 2024 Airstream Atlas. We're gonna get a ladder here in a second. We'll show you the top and then we're gonna do the test drive. Whose horn was that? <laughs> All right, we are on top of the 2024 Atlas and you can see the two 100 watt panels right there for solar. One of those, that forward one most likely is gonna be for the chassis battery. And you've got one here and then we also have a larger 200 watt panel uh, right there. And that's gonna be these, the basically 300 combined. That's gonna be for um, your coach battery, which would be that large um, 12,000 watt battery pack. Now, if you have the non E1 package version, you're still gonna have the 400 watts of solar in total. Now, there is your high performance Starlink dish that is now standard on the 2024 Atlas. So if you decide to get the 24 Atlas, you're also getting Starlink. And then that's one of your uh, powered vents. That'll be the one that's over the kitchen area. And that one right there is gonna be over the bathroom area. We do have one of the exhaust vents right there. Now the black kind of satellite looking antenna there, that's just gonna be HD antenna. And then you can see that low profile Coleman Mach-Q AC system that of course is one of the newer ones. And then the very large um, skylight is there in the front. Now let me jump down, come around to the other side and let you see the other side as well. Okay, so we are at the front. And I just want to show you the side. You've got the really nice awning. That is the uh, armless or, you know, there's no arms on the side. Just going to be across the bottom. That is the antenna for Air Connect. So it is pre-wired for Air Connect and it does have the antenna. If you want to add Air Connect, you just need to add the modem um, inside. You would add that and that would be all that you'd have to add. It also is pre-wired for satellite. If you want to add a, um, TV satellite, so not Starlink satellite, but TV satellite. That's what that input right there is gonna be. And then you got your really large skylight there that is powered and opens automatically. And again, you can see the Coleman Mach Q AC system, the low profile. That is the top of the Atlas, if you were wondering. All right, we are now in the cockpit of the 2024 Airstream Atlas. This is gonna be on the 2023 uh, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 4500 chassis. Now, as far as the interior here, this looks pretty much like last year's interior to me, the same center cluster, the same um, infotainment system with the cool kind of Mercedes looking uh, air vents here. And we're gonna, it's a little bit warm out now. It's cold outside, but you know, now the sun's out, so it's kind of warm in here, but you can set your temperature for HVA system and fan speed. Uh, there's a full auto, then you just click auto, set your temp, and then not worry about it, and it will do its own thing. And of course you can control it yourself if you want to. Now I mentioned outside, and if I didn't mention outside, I'll mention it now. Um, this has a heated windshield, and it's really cool with something I wish I could have in my truck. And if you look hard enough, you can actually see the little squiggly lines going down the windshield. And those are little uh, very fine wires, I'm assuming, uh, that will create the heat. So if you're in that situation, and it's, I think we're actually kind of in the time of year now where it's not quite hot outside, but it's not cold, and you may create a little bit of humidity inside the coach, which makes the windshield fog up. And um, the only way to get the fog going is to turn the heat on, but it's not, it's not hot in here, it's cold. I mean, it's not cold, it's hot. So you really wanna run the AC. So you can click this button here, and what that's going to do is that's going to turn on the defrost in that windshield and that defrost will pretty much go away almost immediately once that thing gets going, which is really cool that you can have that turned on and have AC running. You don't necessarily have to turn the heat on to make that happen. We also have heated seats, both uh, driver side and passenger side. You're also, we now have the power seats. You <laughs> see that there? Laura is very happy about the heated seats. We do have the power seats as well. And one of the things I really like is the three memory seat options. Now, obviously one is, he's gonna be the primary person probably in that seat too, it'll be the secondary person. But three for me is when you turn the seat around for this to be a dinette, you can program that to be where you want it to be once you get it flipped around. 
get it all set nice and then save it to three and that's your button to click to get it in a very comfortable position of course we have power windows on both sides and they're automatic windows as well it's really nice you can just pull the button and they'll go up and we have the top mirrors are going to be powered mirrors the bottoms are not so you'll have to manually um, do those and of course we do have with being mercedes a lot of the safety features that mercedes has so airbags all around us airbags on both sides for a ford collision we are, we're also going to have things like lane keep we'll have collision avoidance we'll have um, sensors all over which is you know really cool um, that you have that with this mercedes um, now in the middle where you've got our infotainment and this is a very responsive system it works extremely well. You're gonna have a uh, phone here. Once you have a phone connected, you make your phone calls, receive the phone calls over Bluetooth. We also have a really nice integrated nav system. Now this isn't a RV nav system in the sense that it's only gonna take you places that you necessarily fit, but it is a really nice nav system. Now, if you buy your camper from us, we give you three years of RV Life's GPS system that does do that and does work over car, uh, Apple CarPlay. You have your radio here. It looks like we've got some Ozzy Osbourne playing. Um, that's going to be your standard radio. And then you've got your media, which will be your phone. So anything you can play with your phone. There's also an info tab that will give you things like your battery voltage, uh, performance, uh, RPMs, all that kind of stuff uh, from the engine. Also, which is kind of cool, consumption. You can kind of see how well you're doing. Right now, we are not doing well. 3 oh. MPG. We've been mostly sitting. <laughs> And then there's other apps that you can get from Mercedes here. And there's also a Mercedes me function or Mercedes, Hey Mercedes function, I think. Yep. <laughs> um, and that will allow you to uh, change the radio station, set directions, make a phone call. You just say, Hey Mercedes and she'll pop up or he, I guess it's, I don't know. It's he or she or whatever. There's also profiles, so you can set up profiles for each driver and then set things inside the coach for that particular driver. Um, and this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's all built in as well, which is really cool. And that's notifications. And up here, you're going to actually have your USB-C port. So this one here with the phone on it, that's where you're going to plug in to get the Apple CarPlay. There's also a 12-volt power there. Am I blocking that? You have 12 volt power right there. And then these other two USBs are just for charging. There's also a wireless charge pad right there, which doesn't make sense because to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you've got to be plugged in, which is going to be power. But anyway, there's an Apple, there's a charge pad there. You can put everything here, plug it all in. And I like that you can kind of shut that door and it's out of the way. You don't see it. It's not going to distract you and you can control everything you need to control within the screen here. There are some physical buttons I really like. So if you want to see um, the home screen, you got it there. If you want to go to nav, you can go there. You need to go to the telephone, click that, radio. There's a home button right there and then power mute button and then your track buttons. And that takes you to oh, all of your other assistance things. So that's your lean keep right there. And we've got things like traffic sign, uh, active lane keep assistance, act active brake assistance, attention assistance, make sure you're not falling asleep while you're driving, um, and then different kind of options for the vehicle. Uh, same thing with lights as you walk up, and then all your other systems. There's a lot of custom, custom ability with the system. And we also have, I'm gonna grab the camera, a really nice center cluster here in the middle. And I think it's this one that controls everything. Oh, right, it's this one. Okay, so we can look into, and you see this has very few miles on it. It's only 38 miles total on this coach. We're gonna add a mile or two when we do our test drive. But you have the ability to go through different things like your trip, uh, your navigation. You can actually see your navigation on here, which I think is really cool to have that in the center cluster if you're using that. You can also show there you go, the correct way, the radio. And then you also, so on the steering wheel, you've got this control section, this control section. So this one is gonna control the center screen. So you have the ability to move through your 
screen there using the buttons that are right here. So I can click into navigation if I want to. I can click back home, all without moving my hand off the wheel. I also have volume control. Um, that's gonna be your Siri control right there. So you can press that up and get Siri going. Favorites, hang up calls, make calls, and then the back button. And then this side, you're gonna have your adaptive cruise control and then your ability to set all your cruise and all that kind of stuff there as well. So a really cool system with Mercedes. Uh, and of course, the center cluster there is really nice. And you can see your mileage on one side, your RPMs on the other side. And then there is storage um, in the doors as well as storage up here, right there. And of course, we've got our, <laughs> that's very um, like, delivery van mirror, <laughs> which is what this essentially is. I assume you've got a USB plug. Yeah, that's for this this well. radio. No, oh, okay. That, that USB there. And we also have some other buttons up here as well as reading lights. Ooh. That's your, I guess that causes Mercedes. There's also a SOS function there too. Don't press that one. Don't press that one. And you gotta have a spot for your sunglasses right there. Do you want to talk about this? Oh yeah, backup camera. So this is your backup camera, but it's also your turn camera. So if you put your left turn signal on, it's going to show you that and show the right. One of the things I really I like about this system is when I put it in reverse, this, this little digit thing here, that's actually showing us how close we are to something, which is really cool. So as you're backing, so I'm going to back towards this Airstream we've got back here. You'll start to see it tell us so uh, we're 10 feet, we're eight feet. I think that's super cool. I think it shows you exactly how close you are. And it also is obviously gonna alert you that you're about to back into something too. So you definitely wanna be careful about that. Now I'm gonna hand this back to Laura and we're gonna I'll put my seatbelt on and we're gonna go out for a little test drive. I will say the new four cylinder seems quiet to me versus the outgoing six cylinder. How is it driving? <laughs> well, for the 30 seconds that we've driven uh, it's quite smooth. I mean, uh, I just feel like I'm driving a big van. Now I've driven a lot of motorhomes. I've driven towed things and that kind of stuff my whole life. I do like, it shows you the uh, speed limit in the center cluster, that's cool. Um, so I'm used to driving things, but what I, what I try to look at when I'm doing a test drive like this is just, does it feel like it would be easy for someone to pick up uh, driving this fairly easy and I would say yes on this the steering wheel steering wheel is super light um, it doesn't take much effort at all to to turn if that makes sense like my truck the steering is, is tighter than the, than it is on it not tighter that's not the right word but stiffer would be the right word um, it's smooth then it feels smooth to you say part of why I wanted to have a little oh somebody got pulled over I want to have Laura with us on the test drive is I do this every day. She doesn't. So she'll get, be able to give a little bit of input in how it feels, but it feels smooth, right? It is incredibly smooth. Ooh, There's a lot, a lot of traffic. traffic. What time is it? Oh, it's four o'clock. It's rush hour. Uh, you know what? We're going to go that way. I mean, you can see everything with the turn signal. The mirrors are plenty big. Um, I think they need to be a little bit forward. If they're a little bit further forward, they'd be perfect. But that's Mercedes, that's not Airstream. Airstream has no control over that. Uh, now for inside, so it's hard to talk about uh, loudness of a coach because every coach makes a little bit of noise when you're driving because you're driving essentially a house down the road. Um, this one, the Atlas, as it should be, is very quiet. I do hear a few things moving around, but I think that's just stuff that's not really um, 
put away well back there, like the, that little um, table, that kind of stuff is back there. Um, but all in all, like it's very quiet. We can have easily have a conversation right now. Now, this is a diesel. There isn't an exhaust brake, so you don't have that function like you would have on a bigger truck um, that you might be expecting on this, but it is going to have some really good uh, low torque power with that um, second or the two twin turbos that you have on this engine, but you have these these little flappy paddles here on the steering wheel. So when you're when you're going down a hill or going down a mountain, which I'm assuming if you're buying this coach, you're buying it to go touring the country and go places, you can use the flappy paddle to gear down. And then what that will do is hold it in that gear. And that's what you want to do when you're going downhill. You don't want to ride the brakes. That's, that's, that's no go. That's dangerous. What you want to do is gear down. Generally what they say is whatever gear you use to get up the mountain is the gear you want to use going down the mountain. So if you were in third gear the whole way up, you want to be in third gear going down. Um, that engine torque, the engine being in that higher RPM is actually going to help you maintain speed as you're going down the mountain or going down the hill. And then the other thing is you want to stay in that kind of 45 mile per hour um, speed. And if you get up to say 55, then you're going to brake to the point of braking all the way down to 45 and then let off your brakes and let it kind of easily kind of just slowly creep back up to 55 and then slow it back, slow it back down. What you don't want to do is ride the brakes. If you ride the brakes, the brakes are going to overheat and that's when they'll fail. And that's when you're going to be using that um, emergency thing that you see in the mountains. What's that called? The truck runaway ramps. Yeah, that runaway truck, truck ramps. Yeah, you'll be using that truck truck runner, runner, runaway ramp. I can't talk. Now, if you get in a situation where you've overheated the brakes because you're riding them all the way down, just use that runaway ramp. But um, as long as you're not riding the brakes, you're not going to have a problem with that. Gear down and use the brakes as you need to to slow down. This is a really nice paved road here. Um, this, I feel like I'm just driving a touring coach. Like I feel like I'm just driving the inter the interstate. Like that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like it's a really big, big motorhome to me. Um, that's what I was thinking. It doesn't feel. It's a really comfortable ride. It almost feels like the. It feels like. It almost feels like I'm t driving my truck. Honestly. Well, I was thinking it's the ride is smoother than his truck. It is smoother. Um, than the, the seat truck. is incredibly comfortable. I love how much you can adjust in the seat. It's not just you know forward and back. You can. How oh, there's, taller there's a, you are. that thigh support thing too. Oh thigh yeah, situation. there's a. So if you've got long legs or short legs, you can adjust where it hits you at your thigh and at your knee. Um, so I mean, I'd be yeah. If like we were on a long drive cross adjust. country in this, I would be perfectly adjust, happy. Adjust this. Yeah. Which is nice. I'll, oh, look at this. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It shows you a little a little motor home in the. I don't know why it's jumping around on camera, but a little motorhome to show you how close you are to somebody in front of you. That's so cute. I went this way hoping that we would be more easy to get out onto the 158 or no, well, Sandy Ridge. It is 4.15. Yeah, it's 4.15. Maybe we should have done the test drive first. Next time. What do you think about the storage area, your area over there in the passenger seat. Oh, I love it. You've got, I currently have a Blue Compass water bottle in here. Um, you could fit, you know, a book, a tablet, a few other things there. You've got this kind of handle compartment here, which fits an iPhone. Well, my iPhone, perfect, almost perfectly. Um, real life there. Real life. Cup holder and more storage in the door. And then you probably can't see it because it's going to be dark, but Chad pointed out earlier all this storage that you have up here. So a lot of options so that you don't have to, you know, have stuff behind you that you're trying to get out as you're going down the road, but you can have it all right here. Um, it's also nice because you, there's a lot of room in between the seats 
And then you can obviously, if you have a bag or something, set it right back <laughs> there if you wanted to be able to grab it as you were driving. All right, folks, that is the end where you are finished with the full walk of the 2024 Airstream Atlas. Now, if you found this video helpful or useful, be sure to click that subscribe button and click the like button. Also, if you are in the market for a Airstream Touring Coach or anything that Airstream sells, uh, be sure to reach out. I will give you the best pricing possible and I'll give you the best customer service as well. Now, if you didn't watch the short video, be sure to watch that video so you can get the perspective of Laura as she looks through the inside and shows us through the inside. She pointed out a few things I didn't even think about pointing out. So definitely watch that video as well. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're living riveted and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.